Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you along with me for a little bit of a book shopping vlog. I am so excited to be doing this. I feel like I've been seeing more and more people do this on YouTube, but it was something that I was a little bit scared of because I wasn't sure how I'd bring you into a bookstore with me. After watching a few of these, I feel like I can do this. I feel like determined and ready to take you along with me for a really fun book shopping vlog. So it's mostly going to be voiceover because I need to conquer that fear first before <laughs> bringing you in and like talking with you. But I have a mission. I have a plan today. I'm going to be taking you along to all of the half price bookstores in Austin or the surrounding Austin areas. There's four that I've identified that I want to go to and I'm really on the hunt for romance, obviously. Indie romance specifically, I never find indie romance at my half price books. We're still going to go and see if they have anything good, but we're going to look for indie romance specifically and then also just like romances I have either read, loved, and want to own or romances that I'm just like interested in picking up and reading. So all things romance all the time. That's what this is going to be. And then I'll do a little bit of a book haul at the end. I'm super excited. I hope you were excited for this journey as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the vlog portion of this video and I will take you to the first Half Race Book location. So the first location that I decided to go to was the one that's actually closest to me and that is the Cedar Park Half Race Books. This is like the most suburban location. I decided not to go to the Round Rock location, which is another suburb close to Austin, uh, just because it wasn't very close to me. But this is going to be representative of, in my opinion, the suburban Half Race Books. They feel very suburban. I feel like the stores feel a little bit newer, a little bit brighter, and I feel like there's some good to that and maybe some bad as well. Um, I, I like this location it's probably not my favorite half price books location but i feel like i'm able to find pretty good stuff and i feel like recently have been a lot more contemporaries and like newer publications at my half price book location which i really really like as you can see there are a lot of like regular trade size paperbacks on the top shelves of the romance section which is not the case for all of the locations that we're going to go to which actually surprised me quite a bit um but all of the top shelves of the two rows of romance are like this and so i was able to like find a pretty good mix of things. I would say this location tends to have kind of what you would expect for um, resale contemporary romances. Again, there's like a lot of Christina Lauren and an Emily Henry and like that sort of thing. I was also able to find like a surprising amount of Christmassy romances. I guess it makes sense since it is you know, a couple of months after Christmas, but that is primarily what I ended up picking up at this location, mostly because I am trying to do a video at the end of the year where I let you know uh, some really good like Christmas and holiday romances to read. But this location was fun. I, again, I like it. And uh, afterwards I decided to treat myself to a little Amy's ice cream, a little snack. So I got some Oreo ice cream with golden Oreos crushed in. And honestly, that's kind of part of the half price books experience for me. A lot of the locations do have Amy's ice cream near them. So an important thing of note. <laughs> So the next location I decided to go to was one in the city, and it is the South Lamar location of Half Ice Books. This is as far south as I wanted to go, and I decided to go to this location first because it's farthest away and I was going near rush hour, so I figured like go far and then I could get the other Half Price Books or hit the other Half Price Books on the way back. And this location, when I first walk in, I was really excited about it. I felt like, okay, I'm seeing some stuff that I don't normally see at Half Price Book locations, like a lot of indie romance, especially on that like first display, I saw some Lucy score, but I feel like I was kind of disillusioned and or let down by this store. It wasn't terrible, but I think like the vibe here is not my favorite. This is a location that I used to live by. It was like my first apartment out of college was off of uh, South Lamar. And so I would come to this location a lot after going to the gym. And I feel like maybe the romance section is a little bit better than it used to be in that there are, you know, some more contemporaries on top of all of those mass markets, which are like typically historical. But the more that I like looked through the books, the less impressed that I was. Not a terrible spread or anything. I was able to find a few romances here that I was excited about, but I feel like when I first walked in, I was like, wow, this is going to be incredible. This is going to be so amazing. But the more that I walked through, I was kind of just like, eh, like there's there's stuff here, but it's nothing, nothing that I'm super hyped about. Um, I was able to find a handful of indies here, which was pretty nice, especially compared to like my Cedar Park half price books. Like there really just weren't any <laughs> indies that I was excited about or that like I would pick up, I guess. Like no, no names that you would think of off the top of your head, like an Elsie Silver or anything like that, which, you know, maybe that's a big ask, I guess, to like find indies at Half Price Books, but um, wasn't able to find anything like that. Um, the cool thing about this location, though, is that they do have a clearance section, which they don't have at my um, 
half price books and they also had a really cool bestseller section like not only when you walk in do you see some like new familiar titles but there's also an additional section where you can find new books which I really liked in terms of how this location compares to some of the others I think this might be one of my least favorite now simply because the vibe is just not my favorite it's really dark in there and I feel like the romance section is just kind of like thrown in the back but hey at least there's an Amy's ice cream right next door The next location that I visited was the North Lamar location. This one's actually not too far from the South Lamar location. I mean, I'm sure you could guess based on the names. This store is one that I have never lived by and is one that I don't get to frequent very often, but I fell in love with the store. I mean, I've been to this one a time or two, but just walking in, it is much bigger than all of the other locations. It feels really light and airy while still having really tall bookshelves. That's like what I'm looking for in a bookstore. Everybody's got their their own specifications and what they're into, but I personally want full height shelves. I don't want you to be able to see my head over the top of a shelf, and I want there to be some natural lighting in there. I feel like my Cedar Park location has natural lighting, but the shelves are really short, and then I feel like the South Lamar location has the tall shelves, but it's really dark. This location is everything. This is everything to me, and I think what I like so much about this one is that you're able to find romance in its own section. So this is an issue that I have at a lot of different half price books. They'll have like a mass market romance section, and then they just won't have the trade size paperbacks anywhere else like you, you can't find them anywhere and then you go doing some digging in like the regular fiction section and you'll and you're able to find a Christina Lauren or an Emily Henry or something like that kind of mixed in with the general fiction but it's kind of hard having to hunt for all of those and at this location the North Lamar location oh my god you're able to find everything that you want like look at the shelves in front of me this is all trade size paperbacks or hardcover romance and it was just such a treat not having to like dig for the things that I want I was quick able to find indie romance. The first one that I found was Icebreaker um, by Hannah Grace that everybody seems to really enjoy. I went back and forth on that one a couple of times, like whether or not I would bring that one home, but I was able to find so many indie romances here. And again, I think that's just a result of being able to actually find the books at this location. They were all together and it was just such a delightful shopping experience. Um, I feel like you're able to feel a little bit more separate from the other people around you as well, which is really cool. I don't know. I, I, I want to feel surrounded by people. Like, I don't want a completely empty bookstore, but I also want to not feel like I'm bumping into people. And I had the romance aisle to myself today. So maybe it was just serendipity, but I had such a good time hunting for romances. And this is the location by far that I found the most books from. Spoiler, I bought books from three of the four half price book locations that I went to. And this is the one that I think I bought like five or six books from. So uh, I think if you are in the Austin area, this would be my recommendation to you. Go to the North Lamar Half Price Books. I think it's an underrated location. It's kind of in like a weird part of town. It's like not quite suburban, but it's also not quite city. And uh, it's also next to a KFC. There's no Amy's Ice Cream close to my knowledge, but there's a KFC, um, probably one of the only KFCs in Austin. So if you're looking for some Kentucky Fried Chicken, there you go. Um, but yeah, I had an absolutely fantastic time at this location and uh, it's the one that I recommend. Now we make our way to the most abysmal of all half price book locations, the Anderson Mill half price books. I used to live by this one. I used to think it was great, but upon further reflection, there's pretty much nothing here for a romance lover. I mean, unless you're looking for a mass market historical, you are not going to find what you're looking for here. Uh, do you notice that there's puzzles on top of the shelves instead of trade size paperbacks? You would be correct. There are no trade size paperbacks here. Um, there is some romance kind of mixed into the fiction, like I've mentioned before. Um, and, you know, there's some there's some other stuff mixed into the science. Fi it was it was a mess. This was a mess. So I hope y'all enjoyed that mini shop with me vlog. I know it was mostly like a review of the bookstores, but I didn't want to like spoil what books I got and or spoil the haul portion of this video. So again, hope it was like good enough. Um, I feel like I need to watch some more of these vlogs and see how I can make them more exciting in the future. But you know, I'm living, I'm learning, etc. So let's start out. Let's go like in order of store. Uh, the first store that I went to again was at like suburban Cedar Park location. I think all three 
of these, okay, maybe not all three, two at least of the three of these romances are Christmas romances. So the first one I got is There's Something About Mary by Cody Hall. I feel like I've seen this, I mean, I feel like I've seen most of the uh, kind of like Christmassy, wintry romances before, but I just feel like I never picked them up because they all kind of look the same. And the titles too, like Meet Me Under the Mistletoe, There's Something About Mary, like they all kind of sound the same, but I'm determined to find Christmas romances that I personally really like. I have a list of like three or four at this point, and I want to get that number to at least six before I recommend them to you. So this book is about a girl named Mary Winters, M-E-R-R-Y, and I think she manages a Christmas tree farm, and she falls for the single dad foreman at the Christmas tree farm who she has been secretly talking to online. Um, I don't think they know the identity of the other person online, which I really like. Like, that's a setup that I personally really enjoy. So I'm hoping that I enjoyed this one. I mean, again, it kind of looks like every other Christmas romance I've ever seen, but fingers crossed goes well. And also fingers crossed it's not a closed door romance. I feel like I can never tell when it comes to Christmassy things, like uh, especially with all of these covers being illustrated, like is it going to be smutty? Is it going to be a Tessa Bailey or is it going to be closed door? Cl there's a time and a place for both, but I, I personally prefer some smut. The next Christmas romance I picked up is Mary Under the Mistletoe by Jenny Bayless. And this one is about Eleanor Noel, Nori for short, um, who runs a secondhand bookstore. I think she went to school with a bunch of rich kids and she goes on a kind of ill-advised winter vacation with them. And things are not going very well because I think she grew up poorer than the rest of the people that she went to school with. And so she doesn't really get along with them, but she felt like obligated to go or whatever. And she ends up meeting the gardener of the castle they're staying at. His name is Isaac, I believe. And it's about their like romance, I guess. I think they had like a fling or something. Um, oh no, she's trying to dodge an ill-advised former former fling and she falls into the arms of Isaac, the castle's head gardener. So um, I like a good opposites attract, like fish out of water kind of romance. And I think this would be fun. Again, I think, you know, she didn't grow up rich, so I don't know like how opposites attracty it is, but different life circumstances, I suppose. So excited to give this one a go. The next one is The Holiday Trap. And I picked this one up primarily because I've heard of this author before. I know that they write a lot of queer romances. And when I saw the word lesbian on the back of this, I was like, okay, I'm in. I feel like I never find queer romances at the bookstore. Um, I did see one last stop at one of the bookstores, but that's like pretty much it. And so I was definitely intrigued and had to pick this one up. I don't even know what it's about. Let me read the back and tell you. Okay, actually, even better, this book is both gay and lesbian. We have two characters named Greta and Truman. Greta is trying to leave her small town to like find someone maybe. And Truman has his heart crushed when his boyfriend, I guess, reveals that he's married and has kids or something like that. And so they both kind of want to, I guess, swap places or they end up swapping places um, like through a mutual friend or something like that. And Greta ends up going to New Orleans. And I'm assuming that Truman's going to go to uh, New England, to Maine. So it's it's a holiday romance, the holiday trap, like holiday as in uh, vacation, I'm assuming. And it sounds cute. I am ready to give this one a go. You know, I actually don't even know that Truman is gay. He might be bi. We, I, you know, I don't know. I can't really tell based on like the cover of the book or really the synopsis, but it sounds good. It sounds queer and I'm ready to give this one a go. It's surprisingly like thick and um, I guess I'm just gonna say thick and long. Ignore me. Excited to try this one. These are the three books that I got from the Cedar Park Half Race Books. Now, the next location that I went to was the South Lamar location, and I found four romances, one of which is an indie, which I'm excited about. It's a book that I'd never heard of, but it's by an author that I've read before, and it is The Pact by Karina Holly. This one is about two characters. There's like a Scottish guy and an American girl, and they've been friends for quite a while, and they promise each other that like if they get to 30 and they're not married, they will get together. They've been best friends friends for a while um, and I think they start having sex and entering into some sort of like romantic entanglement but I think it's before they hit 30 but I don't know interested to try this out I feel like the cover is really pretty I like Karina Holly books I actually don't know if it's Karina Holly or Karina Halley regardless excited to try this one out I love friends to lovers like y'all know how I feel about friends to lovers romances and I feel like this is one I'm gonna have to read in a vlog coming up soon because I'm excited about this one in particular uh the next one that I bought is one that I want to say I got off of recommendation from Erin from Booked and Busy I think this is the I know there's like one holiday romance she likes and I think it's this one it's called Duke Actually by Jenny Holiday, and this one is about a duke who I believe comes to New York and he's looking for a bride because his like fiance dumped him or something like that and he comes into contact with New Yorker Danny who is done with love so you know it's gonna be like a reluctant romance kind of thing and I don't know how I feel about like royal romances like I think I like them sometimes but it's, it just looks cute and the reviews of this are good and also I think I saw a review that like one of the sex scenes in here is like really 
unique perhaps and i'm always here for unique so excited to give this one a try uh next i picked a romance that i've actually already read before paybacks a witch by lana harper i read this one it's sapphic i really enjoy it and i feel like it's a book that i can see myself recommending to people in the future and so i would like to own a copy so i can like hold it up in videos and i also could see myself revisiting this kind of in the witchy season to date, this is the only witchy romance that I've ever enjoyed. So I feel like it was just high time that I own this and for $7.99, like I couldn't pass it up. And then the last book that I picked up is a newer title, I believe. I mean, I actually don't know when this came out. Let's see. 2022, Shipwrecked by Olivia Dade. I read the first book in this series that I can't remember the name of, but I really did enjoy it. Oh, spoiler alert. Really enjoyed spoiler alert. Uh, I think I have a copy of that one. And so I picked up Shipwrecked. I heard the second book is like hit or miss. And so I'd seen it at Half Price Books at a couple of the locations. Wasn't sure if I wanted to pick it up, but this one seemed really appealing to me. It has two plus size main characters. They are co-stars on a book together. Pickles decides that he wants to play with the plastic. So take that from him. Uh, I think there's sort of like a hookup situation here, which I don't normally love, but I'm excited to see where this one goes and excited to see how like the chemistry develops between the two main characters. So those are the books that I got from the South Lamar location. And then because it was my favorite of the three four locations I went to yesterday. I got six books from the North Lamar location of Half Price Books. So first up, we have Scoring Wilder by R.S. Gray. This is a book that I've had on my TBR for eons at this point. And from what I can tell, it seems different from R.S. Gray's other books. R.S. Gray is a super popular author, I feel like, on Kindle, but I don't feel like a lot of people talk about her stuff. They tend to be these like formulaic rom com -y things. She definitely has her craft down, like she knows what she's doing, but I don't tend to connect with her stories because they tend not to be as in-depth. But this is one of her first titles and I think it's a little bit different. Like I feel like it's maybe a little less formulaic, though I haven't read it so <laughs> I probably shouldn't uh, say that for sure. But this book is about 19 year old Kinsley Bryant, who I believe is trying out for the soccer team. Oh, Olympic tryouts on the horizon. Uh, she's in college and she ends up coming into contact with her new sexy coach, Coach Wilder. So, I mean, it's a coach student relationship, but I don't think there's much of an age gap. And I don't know, I just love that dynamic. <laughs> it's kind of giving like Waking Olivia vibes. So I don't know, fingers crossed that this one goes well and that I enjoy it. I think I've only actually finished one other RS Grey book and I think it gave it like three stars. So if this is more than a three star, I'll count it as a win. All right, the next book I picked up is kind of a mm, out of character pick for me, I would say. And it is Misfit by Elle Kennedy. I had been putting off reading this series because I just like wasn't sure how it would shape up to be. I guess. And there's only two books out, but I received the second book in PR, which I'm very, very grateful for. And I decided like, I'm just going to read the books. So I'm going to pick up the first one. So I have Misfit. This one is about our two main characters, RJ and RJ and Sloan. RJ is like new to town and he's going to this like fancy prep school and he's falling for Sloan, who is a sharp tongued temptress. And she is also the headmaster's daughter. So like forbidden sort of romance there. Um, I like a good prep school romance. I, I'm sorry. I just love a good new adult story. I like things that are set at like a boarding school or set at a college or something like that. So very excited to give this one a try. I don't know again much about this series and I feel like I haven't read very many reviews of it, but it's definitely one that I'm going to give a try since I have the first and second books now. The next book is, I would say, the last like semi unexciting one. I mean, I wouldn't say those are unexciting, but we have Portrait of a Scotsman by Evie Dunmore. This book I picked up because I am doing a list video where I read the top 100 romances of the past three years. Um, I have read 75 of the 25 already, like before I decided to do that list video. So this is one of the 25 that I have not read. And since I saw it at Half Price Books for $7.99, I thought I'd pick it up. I've had a really hard time getting access to these from my library. They have like really long holds. And I figured I'd pick it up. Plus the cover is like really cute. So fingers crossed that I liked this. The first one was just kind of okay for me. I rated it two stars the first time I read it and then three stars the second time around. So I liked it more the second time around, which is good. But I'm hoping this one is just fantastic right out the gate, like fingers crossed. Next we have two indies and one book that like, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get there, okay? First up we have The Mixtape by Brittany C. Cherry. And this was only $6.49, which is really great for an indie published romance. I don't know much about this book, but I know that I love Brittany C. Cherry. This one I believe has something to do with music since it's called The Mixtape. We have a rock star named Oliver who is trying to drink his problems away after the death of his twin brother. And we have Emery who is trying to just like keep her head above water. She's a bartender, single mom, etc. And I think they can 
connect over music or something like that at a bar in California. So I don't know, I've been getting more and more into rockstar romances recently. I read some of the ones by Miss Kristen Callahan and really liked them. And so I just feel like this is a natural progression. Um, I also just read the words by AJ. So I guess I'm just like on a rockstar kick. So excited to try this one and excited to have a physical copy of it. This is a book that I actually just read. I should have vlogged it for either Patreon or for y'all, but I did read The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. It was for that, I think top 100 romances of the past three years video. I feel like so many people have talked about this one and really loved it. And I have read it and I really liked it too. I get the hype on this one. It's a book that's like not super serious and I feel like the character development is like maybe a little bit lacking, but it was just so fun and so tropey and felt so so fanfic in like the right way. This book is about Brie and Nathan. They have been best friends forever, like since high school. And they like spend the night at each other's places, like they're they're tight, tight knit. Um, and they've both been pining for each other for like forever. And this romance is about like how they get together, obviously, and how they kind of fight through their like, I guess feelings of like fear of rejection and things like that. I really liked it. I think a lot of people, the people that don't like it tend to not like it because it is a little bit silly and a little bit too tropey and maybe the miscommunication doesn't work for them. But like, I don't, I don't know. Not everything has to be serious. And I feel like this book isn't serious, but it is seriously fun. So I liked it and I'm glad to have this on my shelves. It's a book, again, that I could see myself recommending a lot. Even there's some books that I read and they're five star, but I know it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. And so I know it's not easily recommendable. And there's other books that I give three stars to that I feel like I can recommend to like a million people. So I wanted to own this one and um I listened to the audiobook but I think I might want to reread this physically soon because it was just so damn fun so anyway glad to have found this for $7.99 and then lastly kind of a random pick for me I don't know this is a book that I feel like a few different people have recommended to me on separate occasions and it is The Idea of You I think you say it Robin by, by Robin Lee this is a Harry Styles fan fiction my friends uh, got some cats having fun behind me. This is about our two main characters, Solen and Hayes. She is taking her daughter and her daughter's friends to the show in Vegas. I think she's pretty wealthy and like her ex-husband's wealthy too. So they get like backstage access and like things like that. So they have a meet and greet with the band and Hayes is instantly drawn to Solen, even though she's like 39 and he's 20. He's very much described as Harry Styles, which I think is fun. Um, I've actually already started this. I started this last night because I was just like, you know what? This just sounds campy. It sounds campy is what it sounds like. So Len meets this guy and he is attracted to her and I've only read the first chapter, but I think he is going to go see her at her art gallery in LA or whatever, or whatever, she, wherever she lives, Bel Air. I'm not really sure. He's going to go see her because he is just madly attracted to her and drawn to her. And I will say the first interaction and first meeting, I was like very invested in. So I'm curious to see where this one goes and curious to see if this like is a really like delightful romance. I don't know. The writing is intriguing to me already. It's like very different than anything that I've read before. Um, it's a little bit like buttoned up and stuffy and I feel like that could be a good contrast for, for the idea behind the book, which is kind of silly, like a girl or like a woman dating a younger man. So not that that's a silly concept. You know what I mean? Like like a like a housewife dating Harry Styles. It's, it's a fun concept, okay? Kind of a silly concept. But those are all of the books that I purchased from Half Price Books. I'm so glad I got to take y'all along on this journey with me. I think I may try to do this again in the future. Maybe go to like a Barnes and Noble and bring my sister with me and have her film and like I can talk or something like that. I know this wasn't like the most chatty of the shop with me vlogs out there, but you know, I'm trying to like dip my toes in the water and get comfortable first, but had a great time. I will leave links to, I guess, like the different stores in the description down below. So if you're ever in Austin, you can check out the different half-race book locations. Um, I'll definitely leave a link to the North Lamar location because it's the best one. But thanks so much for watching this video. I love y'all so much and until next time.